This nightscape survey is being conducted on the coast of Maine, next to Acadia National Park on Mount Desert Island. Located in the middle of the island next to Somme Sound, this is the public observing site for the Island Astronomy Institute's star parties. Let's join Jim Cormier as he sets up and levels the tripod in preparation for the night survey. Actually, you know, it captures the sound and everything so we can do narration. You can do an overdub too. Though. Yep. Okay. Jim's making sure the tripod is level in two directions. The computer-controlled Nexstar GoTo telescope mount that Jim's mounting here starts with the assumption that it's perfectly level and that it's pointing straight up. That's a nice angle. Jim's had a bad experience with his cables becoming unplugged in the middle of a run. He's not taking any chances tonight. I've got a little package of tie wraps here. It may require two. The system we are using was assembled by the National Park Service's Night Sky Team. It's on loan to the Island Astronomy Institute through a technical assistance agreement that's part of our collaboration with Acadia National Park's yeah. Night Sky Initiative. I've, you know, I've even run it in the bitter cold. This is arguably the world's finest light pollution measurement system. It was created by the National Park Service to enable it to scientifically manage the night sky as a natural resource. As the computer is moving through the sky all night long, one of the most important things for Jim to get right is what we call cord management. We've had a few accidents in the past, and there's nothing worse than watching the computer system strangle itself in the middle of a run. And now it's time to bring it all to life. All right, that works. The National Park Service has created an absolutely remarkable system. That's better. I like Incredible that. capabilities are within this computer. Okay. Now I get a sign on screen. First go. Setting up and connecting all these cables, aligning the telescope mount, and getting everything ready to go in the dark is not the kind of thing done casually. There are a lot okay. of things that need to be done right and a lot of ways to get it wrong. Check. Okay, the camera's right. The next step is to make sure that the computer, the telescope, and the camera are all talking to each other. Okay. okay. I didn't see anything. So Jim's leveled the tripod, and at this point, he's shooting for Polaris. GPS coordinates and time have been entered. The first image brings up Polaris. Oh, look at that, even. Oh, it's right there. All right. I'm too busy filming it. Because out. Polaris is not exactly <laughs> over the Earth's axis for rotation, Jim has to make very fine adjustments using a calculation of the precise offset at this time of night. One thirty six. I call it good. Get the time set on the both computer and the next day. The computer and the next star mount need to be yeah. synchronized. Each of the 104 images captured by this camera over the course of a survey will contain the time and pointing data Jim is entering. With that information, analysis software will locate stars of known brightness and compare them to on-orbit satellite data. Jim is truly surveying starlight tonight. A custom-designed green filter ensures that all the data reproduces exactly what the human eye would see. The National Park Service visual band is carefully designed to fit between the scotopic and photopic human visual response. All this work is being done 
to precisely calibrate the faint glow in between the stars. That's the information that we're after. The stars will be stripped away from each image and only the faint glow in between will be plotted as artificial night sky brightness. From the top of Cadillac Summit we can see the distant lights from Ellsworth and Bangor and out over the pristine dark skies of the ocean. The amount of starlight lost as it passes through the atmosphere provides valuable information on the quality of the night. These results from Skudik Point show some of the darkest skies measured in Acadia National Park. The dark red and purple indicate nearly pristine, naturally dark skies. The results can also be plotted as a fisheye or full dome of the sky. The legend on the left portrays the full spectrum of light pollution in stellar magnitudes per square arc second. The colors are loosely correlated to those from the World Atlas of Artificial Night Sky Brightness. The darkest colors are reserved for pristine, naturally dark skies in which many thousands of stars are visible to the human eye. Death Valley remains one of the darkest places in the country, along with natural bridges. Skies like these have become increasingly rare in the United States. At Joshua Tree, the impact from Las Vegas is growing apparent. At Lake Mead, the sky is almost completely washed out and the Milky Way is gone. Here at Acadia National Park, Skudik Point has been the darkest location found to date. The Acadia All-American Roadway is the first federal byway in the nation to include the night sky among the intrinsic visual qualities to be protected by the byway. The five surveys conducted so far document a complex interplay between small towns and mountains. We are so impressed with the system's capabilities that we are planning to purchase the equipment for a Phase 2 measurement system for use throughout the state of Maine.